Vernomatic Productions. Are you ready? Live from the Metal Mayhem Studios in Rochester, New York. We are gold. We are gold. And heard around the world by metalheads just like you. This is Metal Mayhem ROC. Heavy metal music. Your weekly dose of metal music. Interviews, album reviews, news, and more. Want to be part of the show? Send us a message through our website, MetalMayhemROC.com. Or hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Search Metal Mayhem ROC. A proud member of the Pantheon podcast team. It's getting nice and heavy. Now, welcome our hosts, John the Vernomatic Verno, and direct from New Jersey, Metal Walt. Good evening, everyone. Metal Walt here from Metal Mayhem ROC. Tonight, we're jumping across the Atlantic Ocean to the UK, where we're joined by Kim McAuliffe, founding member of the London-based band Girl School. Kim is here to talk about the new album, What the F45, and their legacy in rock and roll. So welcome to Metal Mayhem ROC, Kim. Oh, cheers. Cheers, Metal Walt. <laughs> It's it's all about the girls today. Got lots of surprises yeah. for you, Kim. But uh, oh, listen, oh, we okay. have uh, we have a great uh, episode today, and we really want to put the focus on your awesome new album. But before I start, I uh, I think it it goes without saying we need to acknowledge your forty five year career, and that's <laughs> an amazing feat. And if I understand it right, you guys have been together straight through all. 45 years, correct? Uh, well, uh, Denise, the drummer, and I have, yes. Yes. Okay. For some, yeah, somehow we've managed to, to stay together all that time, yeah. Because, of course, sadly, we lost Kelly um, about 15 years ago. Um, but, again, I, I'm absolutely, oh, blimey, all oh, this is coming up now, yeah. Um, and uh, so that, yeah, that was sad. But, yeah, Denise and I, yeah, we, we stuck through it thick and thin. Oh, blimey, look at them all. <laughs> I, I think it's just, you know, I put this together, call this my uh, birthday card to girl school of sorts, right? Ah. Because, listen, it's it's a beautiful body of work. I mean, look at the album covers, 14 studio albums. Yeah. I mean, just an amazing, amazing feat. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe just talk a little about a bit your history with Denise. You guys have been friends for all the way since back then, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, just o well over 45 years because she used to come and see us when we – played in our um, covers band, you know, when we first started out. So um, that was for like a year or so. So, yeah, you know, about 46 years or something. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I just can't believe I'm saying these words. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing, but uh, a, a, a great, great body of work. Um, maybe for the moment, if you could just talk a little bit about some of the other members, like who else is in the band in, in 2023? Um, well, of course, we have the new girl, Jackie Chambers, Jax, um, who's only been in the band for 24 years. So, because um, <laughs> she's always going to be the new girl. <laughs> and um, and then we have, um, actually, she doesn't mind being called the new girl because she thinks that makes her seem young, doesn't it, then? But anyway. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got uh, Tracy, who we've actually known for about 40, 45 years as well. Um, who's been in the band, well, it's her third time now in the band, so third time lucky, hopefully, yeah. Wow, that's, uh, so you guys have been together, really. This is like, yeah, there's some change members from the beginning, mm -hmm. but this is a band that's been intact for a long, long time. I just love the image of the three of you playing here. I don't know where this was taken from, but that's just like, that's all rock and roll right there. Look at, you get your faces just having a good time in yeah. a little room. I think I know where that is. Yeah, that's Bannerman's in um, Edinburgh. Yeah, that's where that is. That's yeah, great, that, great rock pay place there. Yeah, that's cool. I like the I like the ceiling, but uh, yeah. Um, so it's really, really good stuff. So Kim, I always like to do a little icebreaker to get us off on the right foot before we get into the uh, into the discussion. And I'm going to bring something up. So I have uh, four children, and I only have oh. one girl, and she's nine years old, and she's a big Taylor Swifty. But yeah. anytime I get a chance to uh, have a discussion with a, a female, she gets all excited. And oh, uh, right. back in December, I think it was, we had his oh, wife, yeah. Beth uh, Bethany, who's his bass yeah. player and spouse, 
onto the show and they did a little interview with Bella. But for this session, my daughter created a show, a little bit of show that she wants to show you. So I'm going to bring up this slide here. Wow. So this is my daughter, Bella, oh. and she decided she was going to wear every rock and roll shirt she had and make a photo collage to show for you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, she beautiful. Oh, hi, Bella. Are you listening? <laughs> She's at summer camp right now at the swimming pool. But, oh, is uh, she? Yeah. I was going to say, otherwise I was going to say to her, she's definitely got to become a drummer to annoy you. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I'll tell her, I'll tell her that when she gets home from camp. Yeah. Make a racket. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And and one of the catchphrases for uh, girls these days is slay. Everything slays. Oh, is it? So, uh, oh, yeah. So if you talk to any little girl between the ages of like five and 12, they're going to say, yeah, Kim, girl school, wow. they slay. Okay. I haven't heard that one. I must admit, but but then again, I'm not very au fait with all the all the the youngsters lingo. I must say, <laughs> but that's that's quite all right. Um, yeah. But uh, Kim, seriously, congratulations on now. How do we say it? Is it what the forty five? Is that how we're going with? Well, it? actually, are you allowed? Are we allowed to swear? Not that I normally do swear. You absolutely are allowed to swear. So fucking well, go for it. Well, it is. Is what the fuck? Forty-five. <laughs> but uh, obviously, because we don't normally swear, it's what the forty-five. So you can say it how you wish. Because that's a, that's what we were saying when we were trying to think of um, you know a title for the album. Uh, you know, we were trying to think. Well, not one of the songs on the album didn't really suit you know a, um, an album title. And also, if you do do that, then. That that track sort of becomes the focus, you know, everybody thinks that's like the main track. So we didn't want that. And, um, and of course it's a bit like, it is what it is. You know, one of our singles, uh, it's something that we keep going, what the 45, you know, what the, every time people were telling us that we've been together 45 years and this is our 14th album, that used to be our, our natural response. So of course <laughs> we just suddenly thought, well, that's got to be the album title, isn't it? I mean, it's, there it is. So um, that was it done. I, I love it. I think it's a really catchy phrase. It fits well, like right on the back of the leather jacket. Um, yeah. But it's uh, it's clever and it's unique and it's it's fresh. And I will say, you know, I've uh, I go out for my daily exercise and I've been spinning the new album and it's great. I mean, it flows from end to end. I, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, like if if the songs just leave you feeling good and smiling, it's a good, good rock and roll album. So you definitely uh, accomplished your mission there. Um, yeah. Yes, that, that was, in fact, our mission. When people ask ask me, they say, oh, what, what did you want to achieve? And we just say, I like a bloody good heavy rock album. Um, that's all we ever wanted to do, you know, but especially because, you know, obviously we hadn't recorded one for quite a while. And you never know, yeah. This we thought this possibly might be the last one because it is 45 years now. and uh, So you never know what's going to happen. So we wanted to make sure this was special. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think um, I love some of this merchandise. I mean, throwbacks to uh, <laughs> the 80s, the uh, the yellow cassette and the... Yes, I want one of them. I haven't even got one of them yet. I yeah, saw I this one. online. I guess you could buy them. I want one too. So maybe yeah, you can get me I one. On we'll get... Yeah, I hope, we're, I hope they're going to give us one free. I, and the knickers. You can get knickers as well. And I want a pair of those as well. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Girl knickers, by the way, not guy knickers. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. And man ones. <laughs> oh, there's man ones as well. Okay. Oh, there's man ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim, in the press notes, I love the uh, the tongue and cheek and funny humor and how you guys say, you know, you leave the grit under your fingernails and the muck under the crusty leather boots. I guess that that tells you who you ladies are and who Girl Skull is, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we're not exactly uh, the most feminine of of, of women, <laughs> so always been always been a bit of tom, bit of a tomboy, all of us. So um, yeah, that's that's us right down to the ground, I reckon. Yeah, but uh, hey, let's rock and roll. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we wanted to take some time and and go through the album. Um, I think, uh, like I said, I have my opinions on the songs. I'll you know, share yeah. my take on some of them. And I'd like to hear most importantly, your take on all of them. Right. So yeah. um, the opening track, it is what it is. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, it's a catchphrase that we all use day to day. And, yeah. you know, I love this one because it's just 
it's a rocker with a great hey you know main riff and it's pounding drums really really good solo i even like the way that there's a little unplugged bass to open oh yeah um and <laughs> yeah. going back to the press notes it says this is an addictive motor torque charge scuzz, whatever that right. may mean, but it sounds really cool. It so talk like, about I mean, the opening track, Kim. Yes, we we didn't say that, I must admit, but whoever said it does sound cool. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, basically, this is um, a, a, another saying, you know, that um, everybody I know certainly has said it, you know, uh, if not once, a load, a load of times, and it is what it is. You know, we're always saying it because no matter what situation we find ourselves in good or bad we always go oh well it is what it is you know what we're we going to do about it and uh and then of course i thought it suddenly stuck in my head and then i suddenly got the tune for it and so that would be knocking around in my brain for a couple of years and um i just put it sort of put it on the back burner and still until we got told that we had to get in the studio and then it was time to actually record this album that we owed the record company so yeah, that was one of the first ones. It's a good, it's a good lead track. I, I like it. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, so now, cold dark heart, right? That one, yeah. you know, it's it's an interesting song because it has this one riff that it just kind of chugs around, and then there's this yeah. melodic three word chorus, and it, that's like the simplicity and the beauty of the song. It's just it's right there for you, and then you go out on YouTube and you got this like really dark animated video it's like wow look at this yeah so. yeah 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 no uh, well basically that they're my favorite songs i mean when jackie tries to get too complicated or stick too many bits in i go hang on a minute hang on a minute <laughs> so i'm always cutting bits out you know and sticking bits together and throwing away other bits of that because that's my that's my ideal song you know just get down and and, and if it's a good riff just go with it you know and um yeah, I mean, basically, that was one of mine and Jackie's Zoom writing episodes that we used to do twice a week. Um, so there is this, there is, you know, a good thing about this Zoom thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, she came up with this riff. And then I had, I'd had i had some ideas that I'd written down anyway. And just as she started playing it, Cold Dark Heart just popped, in, cut heart, popped into my head. And um, we virtually wrote the song there and then. Yeah. As I say, she tried to put a few more fancy bits in, but I weren't having it. <laughs> <laughs> who is the character in this song by the way well yeah i mean it's sort of based on you know countess bathory um you know who who used to apparently bathe in the blood of virgins to keep herself young and all that sort of malarkey so yeah there's you know a bit, a bit of inspiration behind it well that is dark and sexy all at the same time i must yeah, say wow that's go. that's very very inspirational <laughs> but uh cool cool song um, you, you know, you talk about the uh, the pandemic, I guess, or writing on Zoom. And and I don't know if you intended to do this, but there's a couple of tracks on the album, uh, Invisible Killer, and it's a mess. And I think yeah. that they go hand in hand. And because it talks about the silent killer COVID and then the state yeah. of the world that we're in with the political state all over the place in Ukraine. But yeah. what I found intriguing about these is these are extremely happy optimistic songs the music it's melodic and it's like oh they're really dark subjects but you girls went out there and you made them feel really good they're happy songs <laughs> well i mean obviously um the covid thing so it feels like a bad dream now um but um yeah tracy wrote that that one when she was stuck in the hills in spain where she lives and couldn't literally see anybody for two years i mean they were tough over there you know yeah. the police used to come over in helicopters and things and you know, I mean, she was literally stranded because she lived at like a, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And um, so she wrote that then. And we thought, well, we didn't really want to put a song about that bloody pandemic on. But, you know, we, we allowed one. So but we didn't want it to be all doom and gloom because we're out the other side. And, you know, perhaps some lessons, lessons have been learned. Who knows? So, yeah, um, that was that one. And then, of course, it's a mess. Um, yeah, it's um, that's all. Yeah, that's quite a jolly tune, isn't it? Yeah. All about yeah. the end of the world. <laughs> and the destruction <laughs> that humans are making. Yeah. So, um, but you know, we don't want to sound too, too uh, downbeat. No, absolutely not. I mean, that, that, that song has like, yeah, it's always light at the end of the tunnel, isn't there? Oh, totally. I mean, that's got such great vocals and harmonies on it. It's hard not oh, to yeah, like yeah. that song. Right. So yeah, that's one of Jackie's, you know, she, she bunged the kitchen sink in that one and had to rein her in a little bit, but you know, she's, <laughs> It went a bit nutty on it. <laughs> That's good, though. It's good. Yeah, now, 
Oh, uh, another another unique one, I think this one is Barmy Army, yeah. right? And this obviously is a song about your fans. Yeah. And it's cool at the end. You hear kind of the beer beer glasses uh, yeah. cheering each other and and the British yeah. accent screaming. So a uh, really cool little <laughs> ode to your fans there, I suppose, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm after it seems to be going down really well with them because they still come follow us, you know, the the ones that, um, you know, are still able to. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, because basically that they helped us in the beginning. And it's true, they used to sleep in telephone boxes and just turn up at God knows where and help us with the gear, you know, and, yeah, bless them. Yeah, we still know them by name, you know, and still see them at the gigs and stuff. So, yeah, that was obviously we had to say something about them. Yeah, yeah it's, that's a, a... without them, you know, it's great, yeah. That's cool. That's really, really good. I, I like that one. Now, um, how about the song Are You Ready? And again, this is another one. Really cool animated video. Yeah. It's almost a storyline. I know you guys have done some touring with Alcatraz earlier this year, and it yeah. looks like Joe Stump has played on this one. Yeah. But I was not expecting his version to be in the video, too. Oh. <laughs> so talk a little <laughs> bit about this one. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, what happened was we were on, we were on their um one of their songs um, on their, one of their albums. And um, we were, oh, don't get mad, get even. And we were on tour with them in Europe. And Jimmy just happened to say to us all, oh, do you fancy doing some backing vocals? One of our tracks. We said, yeah, it was a day off, you know, not a lot else to do. So we all trooped into his bedroom where he had all his, you know, thingy set, uh, recording stuff set up. And we just sang along on the chorus to it. So of course that turned out really well. So obviously when we were recording our album, and we, of course we needed songs as well, I just said to Joe, "Come on, come, on, you know, give us some riffs," because he's always coming up with stuff. He plays constantly, like eight hours a day or something, you know. So uh -huh. he's always coming up with stuff. So um, yeah, so he sent us, uh, or sent me some couple of his riffs and bits and pieces. So I put them all together and we wrote the song. And then of course <clears throat> their idea—it was the record company's idea again. They wanted to follow, uh, follow on using us for the cartoon because, of course, we'd appeared in theirs. So they used our characters from their their video, obviously in our video, and then we stuck him in as well. And it's quite quite funny, really, because yeah, we have to rescue him from the from the wicked devil woman. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think he quite liked that. Yeah. It's a it's a good one. It's a it's a real good one. Yeah. I, I like that one. Oh, yeah. I just have to say as well, it's um it's Jackie's playing on the actual lead. I think you can tell it's different players. So she's playing on the actual little lead break in the middle, but he's doing all the other diddly bits all over the place elsewhere. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's cool because that's like you know, you got three videos out there on YouTube for the new album, and they're all different. One's the really dark animated one, you got the other one, which is the performance video, and then you have this animated one with Joe in it, like Really, really cool stuff. So uh, very creative in that. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yep. We can we can see you. Be we back. can hear you, Kim. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, again, yeah. the videos. Um, love the cartoon video because it means that we don't have to be in it. <laughs> so you know, we we like our cartoon selves. <laughs> That's funny. And even Alcatraz, they all love their cartoon selves. We all thought it was really cool being a cartoon. Um, and uh, but you know, you do have to have a video with you actually in it, I think, as well. So, obviously, it is what it is, is that one. And then, yeah. um, yeah, then the record company came up with the we, we love the, the graphics on on um, Cold Dark Heart. So, yeah, I think the three of them, as you say, quite different. There's something for everyone, I think, absolutely. And you can tell that yeah. you ladies, you're definitely uh, you like to have a good laugh, you probably have to like love to have a pint because then you listen mm -hmm. to some of your other songs, uh. <laughs> Great yeah. too, and I call this. Then there's the party block. You got the party block songs, yeah. believing in you, yeah. up to no good, and the actual song party. Um, yeah. They all kind of go hand in hand. They're just uh, they're catchy, and they got that '80s vibe, and they're just party yeah. rocking songs. You know, a really really good shredding on them. Um, yeah. The song itself, party. I love it because. You do this little midsection where you have the ode to some of your other favorite artists and your other favorite songs, and you got to listen yeah. to it. So you got to hear Led Zeppelin in there. You have Rainbow. You have Queen. You have David Bowie. You even threw a Blitzkrieg one in there, which I thought was clever. We had Brian Ross on the show earlier this year, and we talked about this song. But uh, yeah, really good. So talk about the party tracks on the album. Um, well, I mean, basically, if you listen to it, we 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 literally reference every single band from like our glam rock days. So we start off with the, um, this is another one that I had in my head as well. That kept sort of, 
you know, you wake up sometimes and you've got this sort of thing going round and round. So I thought, oh, this could be fun. You know, just like writing all the, trying to get as many bands in as possible that meant something over the years, you know. So I think the first, I can't even remember what the lyrics are, but I think we start off with something like, you know, we can party all day, take it all away. We've got a few of ours in there. We do the wig wham bam, you know, obviously yeah. sweet. Yeah. Can in the can, obviously Susie Quattro. Come on, feel the noise. Slade. Yes. Uh, Demolition Boys, us again, and oh, whatever. They, but as we go through, we lit, it was real good fun just trying to fit in all these lines. And then I think at the end, of course, we've got Saxton, yeah, Strangers in the Night, Bomber in Flight, Moat Red, yeah, Whole Lot of Love, obviously Led Zeppelin, yeah. yeah, Rainbow, as you say, Rainbow Rising from Above. But yeah, it was real good fun to do that. Yeah. I must have a listen to it again at some point because I keep forgetting what, what lines we got in there. But um, it was good fun to write, it really was, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You do. You got to listen to it a couple of times because you keep, you keep hearing more of the bands. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You've got to check check the bands. Out, I love yeah. that. I love that clever way <laughs> of thinking like, when yeah. bands go and write music like yeah. that. It's really, really and cool also, for the fans. Yeah. The the other thing I wanted as well is I wanted us all to sing on it. So it was just like a a chanty band thing all the way along, you know. So yeah, that was really good in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a few beers were had on that one, singing that in the studio. Ah, <laughs> oh, perfect. That's 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 the, that's what the situation should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's really really good. Well, uh, yeah. we couldn't go without saying that the 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 way to close the album out, of course, is the Motorhead classic, "Born to Race Hell." I mean, I'm a Motorhead junkie. You guys have history with Motorhead boys. But like yeah. when I look back at their back catalog, you know, most people say, "Ah, Bomber, Overkill, Ace of Spades, yeah. Killed by Death," but that song, there's something about that song that just gets me fired up. And I was so happy to see that you did your version of it on there. And you brought some special yeah. guests on there. So talk to us yeah. about this collaboration and who's playing on yeah. that track. Well, we thought it was about time that we did another uh, Motorhead song because we couldn't think of another one, at, you know, <laughs> at the time. And um, and then we thought, well, yeah, it'd be good to do a later motorhead one like you're saying instead of all all the other old classics funny enough it was my other half he was in his shed and because uh, he listens to planet rock a lot and all that and i think it was in um what was uh sons of anarchy wasn't it i think uh, he said the song was in that or something so he went all oh, that so i thought yeah that would be a good one wouldn't it put it to the rest of them of course they um yeah they all agreed and so that was the one we said yep yeah. and then we thought wouldn't it be good to have a few people on it you know Again, just like is the closing one, a bit of rabble rousing. So, of course, we asked Phil, um, and it was great for him because he's actually playing on a track that he, at least he actually played on, you know, as opposed to playing Eddie's stuff, um, right. as much as we love Eddie, of course. But uh, And then, so, yeah, he was in. And then I thought, wouldn't it be great to do, um, you know, like a duet? I've never actually done a duet with anybody. <laughs> Not, duet sounds funny, doesn't it? It sounds like Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers or something. But anyway. Dolly Parton and Rob Halford, uh, if you get the new Dolly Parton oh, of album. Of course, yeah. That's, that's only just happened, doesn't it? I think they copied us here, though. No, <laughs> um, so, of course, we asked Biff, because, of course, we've known Biff for so long now as well. You know, as long as Motorhead, we've toured with them, done so much with them. And, of course, he agreed. He loved to do it. So we got him on there. And then... Just like out of the blue, a friend of mine said, oh, I know Duff and I know he was a big um, Lemmy friend and, and fan and he loved girls' school. Do you want me to ask him? We're going, oh, yeah, right, as if, you know, because we don't know him. We haven't met him or anything. And um, they sent an email. Next day he came back. He said, whatever they need. So we wow. just were blown away. Yeah. Wow. And um Shows how lovely he is because he then sent another email going, "Oh, well, do you mind if, if I if do you mind if I if I do it in a couple of weeks or so?" He said because I'm on tour in Australia, you're in New Zealand at the moment. <laughs> so, it's like, no, we're going to go. No, you have to do it. You have to get into it now. Do it right now. <laughs> but so lovely of him. Yeah. So well, we were well chuffed. Yeah. Well, that's uh, it's the hell of a way to close the album out, and like I said. I love it. We love it here. And it's a it's a great uh, product. And, and we wish you the best with the new release. Oh, Thank so you. we want to yeah. we want to take a little bit of uh, the time now to go back in history. And right. uh, I, I have a couple of images I want to share here. And, and, and again, let's talk a little bit about your history. And you got some great oh, pictures out there yeah. on your Facebook of of all of your friends in rock and roll, some of the older photos and some of the newer photos. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, Dio, yeah, bless him. Because, of course, Dio sang one of our songs on our album Legacy. Um, so that was incredible. Obviously, Motorhead. Oh, yeah, Metallica. <laughs> oh, dear. 
that was a right old night. That was. was. Got to remember do that. You, now, when was yeah, that? And do you do you recall right. when that was that Metallica photo? Yeah, yeah, it was actually on the Deep Purple reunion tour in America. So whenever that was, I, yeah, again, I have no idea about years or anything. But look how young we all look. <laughs> So a good it, few years back, yeah, in the that 80s. Was, that would have been probably the Perfect Strangers Tour, so probably 1984. That was, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Perfect Strangers Tour, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, <laughs> uh, it's funny now, the Metallica boys, they are uh, living where I live in New Jersey, New York. They're coming mm. in this weekend. It's the the inauguration of 72 Seasons, their new album, and they're opening their U.S. tour this weekend. Uh, and John and I will be there. And uh, uh Funny, funny enough that James's son, who's in his twenties, Caster Hetfield, has his own band called Bastardane, uh, yeah. and uh, they're playing around. They're actually playing down by me tonight. I may actually go check them out. So it's it's like oh, a, right. the history of metal continuing through multiple yeah, generations. Yeah. That's good to good to hear. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just um, people are saying, you know, a lot of other interview when I do some interviews about what do you think going to be the future. Uh, well, I don't know. It's hard to say because, you know, we're all getting a bit older now, us original lot. So it's nice to hear some other lots, you know, coming up. <laughs> yeah. Kim, I was going to ask you a question. Do you um, uh, talk about, uh, you know, female, all female bands, not just female fronted bands, because, mm. you know, in the metal scene now, as you know, there are I mean, the, the women fronted bands, they're they're everywhere. They're Europeans, they're Americans. And there's some yeah. amazing, amazing artists. I mean, one of my favorite, uh, you know, rock bands is Hailstorm out of Pennsylvania. But, you know, there are uh, there are quite a few new bands. And I was curious if you had any likings or preferences to any of the bands that are out there. And I shared a few of my favorites right. here. OK. Um, some of them are European. Some of them are American. I was going to say, uh, you got Burning Witches there. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah, yeah, we played a gig with them. Yeah, they they um, supported us at a gig in Europe somewhere. It was a couple. Yeah, I've heard of the Iron Maidens. They're all, they're all good players. The Warning, I don't yep. know. I can't see who that other lot are. But Burning it's, Witches, uh, they're brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, they're a Swiss band, I believe, correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were quite nice. They were nice meeting them, you know. And, of course, the other band we can't forget is Thunder Mother. Yes, they're Swedish, Swedish girls, yes. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, of course, F Philippa co-wrote, you know, Believing in You. Yeah, so, it, on the album. So yeah, big shout out to Thunder Mother and Philippa. Yeah, so that's and these other these other bands here for you for your information. The warning are they're actually three sisters out of Mexico and they're young girls. They're like oh, I think right. under twenty one. Um, wow, is that nice? Yeah. Plush is an American band uh, uh, that uh, is again they're just starting their careers, but they have really yeah. really got the essence of hard rock and. Maybe oh, radio excellent. friendly hard rock, so they're yeah. keeping that torch going, which is which is yeah. nice too. So yeah, that's that's good to see. Absolutely, that's good to see. Yeah, definitely, and good luck to them. Yeah, yeah. So taking it back to uh, your upbringing, I always like to say, "Hey, well, I I live in New Jersey, New York." Now I'm I'm 53, and I guess I missed the boat a little bit and was never able to see girl school when they played in the states back in the day but i went back and i found some of these archive pieces of literature you know wow. the ticket stub yeah. that you guys opened for deep purple at the meadowlands in new jersey uh, wow. which is only a, a maybe a half hour from me and it looks like you played yeah. the capitol theater with boc you played yeah. lamore so maybe talk a little about your memories of playing in in jersey jersey in new york back in the in the early part of your career um, <laughs> Um, um, I would if I could remember it. <laughs> I remember the Deep Purple uh, tour as well because it was so bloody massive, you know, the stadiums and stuff. And um, yeah, and that was a tour that actually, funny enough, Metallica, well, James and Lars, um, actually came on the whole tour. They followed the tour. So we used to have a laugh with them every night. Um, but no, I just remember, especially, well, Blue Oyster Cult, we played with them all over the place. We've played with them you know, all over the country and, and, and different countries. So um yeah, they they were good fun. I don't remember this Lamore thing. Um and um yeah, as I say, Deep Purple uh, straight deep perfect strangers tour. 
just remember that we used to be on the side of the stage watching some nights and the, the crowds were so noisy you just couldn't at one point you couldn't even hear the the it was like something like the Beatles or something you know Chase Stadium where you where you see that footage of them they're playing and you yeah. can't hear anything that's what it was like it was completely nuts yeah but wonderful to be part of now when was the last time girl school played in the states has it been a couple of years um we actually funny enough we talk about well swedish girl bands a band called crucified barbara that are no right. longer together um were our special guests on our last um usa talk which was again you're asking me i have no idea possibly eight years ago perhaps i don't okay. know something like that and we did we did it all the way from the west coast all the way across to the east coast going up and down into canada bloody hell that was that was a tough for a month that was but good fun as well you know so yeah 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 well hopefully you do get back to the states at some point in time yes apparently we're coming in well i don't know november apparently and then definitely march because we're playing that um festival down in texas or bloody what's it called hell's hero hell's heroes or something yeah. oh there it is yeah 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 and uh yeah we just did the metal magic one that was great and yeah, oh, yeah that was us with um yeah alcatraz and that was it yeah so yeah definitely um obviously then that's going to be we're touring then so don't know where we're going to be going but hopefully somewhere near you <laughs> yeah that would be amazing that's what i when i saw this ad i mean number one you talk about a killer festival i mean yeah. just one after the another here but hopefully mm -hmm. that means you know some of the bands such as girl school they get out and get on the buses and they head around the country and play some of the yeah, places i think that's the idea that's definitely the idea that's that sounds great. Well, we look forward to hopefully getting to meet you and see you. Um, and and you've done some touring already this year, right? You did a, a tour uh, with Alcatraz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, and Titan, who were another band way, from way back when, great friends of ours. Um, but yeah, it's funny. It's silly, really, because obviously the album's out now, but we're not really touring until next year. <laughs> so that'll be uh, like forty six years then. That's it. That's it. Well, that's uh, that's good. But, uh, yeah. you know, we you, you'll get out there and support that for sure. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. So, yeah. Kim, um, Kim, any any parting stories and maybe or, or anything you want to share with the listeners before uh, we head our separate ways here? Yeah. Well, just, um, hope, you know, hope, hope you can hear the album or at least, you know, get out and buy it somewhere. You know, try not to nick it. But, you know, it'd be nice <laughs> if you actually went and bought it somewhere. And then hope that if you do, that you're going to love it. So, yeah, because we're really proud of it. And, uh, you know, it just, it's, we, we've been having such great um, reviews and such great feedback from people that we're quite blown away, blown away, really. Yeah. I don't, you know, speechless sometimes. <laughs> well, that is a good, uh, yeah. it is a good product. So where can we find uh, information on the band? And the normal uh, yeah, you know, Facebook got, and got, the websites. Yeah, countless pa Facebook pages. I think we've still got our Girl School web page. Um, so, yeah, yeah, just, uh, just you know, key in Girl School. And hopefully you won't come up with any porn sites with girls in school uniforms. If you get past that, you'll find us. <laughs> yeah, we've got to make sure you link the, you make sure you don't put the space in between the two names, right? Then you, yeah, oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, it's one word. One word, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Kim, yeah. it was uh, really, really nice to be speaking to you about your long yeah. and rich history and the killer new Thank album, you. and we wish you the best yeah. with this, and hopefully, if we don't see you yeah. in Texas, you end up over here in New York and New Jersey, and we'll yeah. have a oh, pint no, together. Oh, no, we want to come to New York. Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll be there. As soon as, as soon as they let us, we'll be there. <laughs> well, we'll be waiting for you there with a pint in hand, okay? Oh, fantastic. Right, we're coming. We're coming. <laughs> sounds great. Well, Kim, all yeah. the best, and uh, right. say hi to the Keep other kiss. ladies for you. Yeah, we'll do. And yeah. we'll see you Big down kisses. the line. Horns up. Yeah, all right. Cheers, Metal Happy Metal Kisses. Big kisses. Bye. Bye. Bye, Kim. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Metal for Life. Thank you for listening to Metal Mayhem ROC. Check out our website at MetalMayhemROC.com for information on podcasts, archives, links to all our live radio shows, and all sorts of info. Please like, follow, and share with everyone, even your non-metal friends. And always remember to keep it heavy.